Similar to what preceded the Age of Resurgence, the era was followed by a similar period to the Great Decay. As a result of the backdoor crisis caused by the activities of the tyranny, many users left the server, resulting in it becoming barren and abandoned. This mirrors the end of the Age of Unrest, a large entity, the Facebook Republic, falls, which gradually results in the server becoming an empty shell of the Golden Age preceding it. This period of decay would come to a close much faster than the one following the Age of Unrest, when a large YouTuber by the name of The Camping Rusher published a video on the server on June 1st, 2016, falsely proclaiming it the oldest server in Minecraft. Rusher brought a deluge of new players to the server, enough to make it active again. These new players didn't fare well to players who had remained after the backdoor crisis due to the lag they caused and the general immaturity of Rusher's fanbase. The video and the subsequent series that Rusher produced on the server exploded in popularity, bringing many new players to the server. The new players reportedly outnumbered previous players 4 to 1 or higher. This would result in the largest conflict on the server to date, the Rusher War. Organized resistance against Rusher began about two weeks after Rusher's arrival when FitMC posted a video of him and two other players killing 40 Rushers at a base. The video was posted around summer which contributed to the large number of players joining and also gave the opposing players time to fight the intruders. Fit afterwards became the leader of Team Veteran, the opposing group to Team Rusher, a group whose stated goals are to fight and to enable each other to play on the server like the older players. Rusher's declaration of war further added to the chaos the server faced as players who aligned with him were generally uneducated on how the server worked, so they caused damage to many structures they deemed to be enemy bases. The veterans initially consisted of the players that remained on the server during the Tyranny's reign of terror. Its goal was to purge the server of new players, all of which, regardless of actual allegiance, were grouped under the Rusher umbrella. The veterans intended on sealing off the spawn to prevent as many players from coming through as possible, in hopes of driving the Rushers off of the server. On the 22nd, the second major battle of the conflict took place, when veterans discovered Rusher's first attempt at creating a base, and lava casted it. The use of lava casting and end crystal bombing was used heavily during the conflict, with a large curtain built using the former tactic around spawn to reduce the number of players escaping. On July 15th, Russia arrived at the veterans' Crystal Islands base, resulting in its evacuation as part of a compromise, which was later revealed to be orchestrated by Fit, starting a rivalry with him in Autopia. A day later, the Valley of Wheat was destroyed by a corrupted unicorn, a member of the resistance with support for some Russians, which resulted in backlash from the community. The day after that, numerous important veteran leaders met up on the server for the first time. On the 18th, the server's priority queue, which was controlled by Rusher, was implemented to handle the surge of new players. Prior to this, on the 8th of June, the server's hardware had to be upgraded to handle the players. Soon afterwards, a group of 14 users raided the resistance base owed by the Napkin of Truth and started the fourth incursion, a conflict concurrent with the Rusher War that also targeted Rusher and any groups that aligned with it. And soon after, the veterans attacked the resistance at spawn. During a meeting between three players named Gods, Napkin of Truth, and Wild X, Gods was ambushed by a player, with the other two participants refusing to help, resulting in Gods believing Napkin had betrayed him. On August 5th, Fit and Rusher dueled, with Fit emerging victorious. The question of whether 2 2 t was truly an anarchy service brought the question when a veteran aligned player named Taroga Dude had his priority Q stats removed. Rusher, being the only individual capable of doing this, came under scrutiny for this. According to Fit, this was done by Rusher as a result of Taroga Dude hacking into his friend's Skype account, which caused some to question whether the server was truly anarchy. Some players even believed that Rusher had been handed over ownership of the entire server from Housemaster. One of the last major battles of the Rusher War occurred on September 16th at spawn. The veterans, assisted by the resistance, attacked the remaining Rushers at spawn, who were outnumbered 1 to 10. Team Aurora and the 4th Reich clashed again at the Southern Canal. Many factions other than the veterans and the Russians existed during the war, including unaligned neutral players providing resources to players that spawn, regardless of alignment, mostly by planting melon farms for players to get food from. The Vortex Coalition being the only major group to exist for a long time prior to and after the conflict. The Peacekeepers were a group of players who were opposed to the war as a whole, but were far from being pacifists and fought both sides until eventually siding with Russia. The Resistance was another Russia aligned group under the leadership of Corrupted Unicorn. They were responsible for the destruction of the Valley of Wheat and hindered the progress of the Lava Curtain at spawn. According to some accounts, they didn't live up to their name and are believed to have caused as much destruction as other groups, including their supposed veteran enemies. The Fourth Reich was an ally to the veterans. It initially began as a group that opposed the Vortex Coalition, founded after a rumor spread that a Discord server for 2B2T was going to be restricted to veterans. It was also known to destroy Russia hideouts, and its goal eventually changed to engraving its name in 2B2T history.
Team Aurora was an anti-Russia group that split off from the resistance after one of its members leaked Russia based locations to the veterans. The Blind Eye Clan was not a participant in the conflict, but did exist during it, and afterwards had the goal of destroying Spawn. It was to destroy Spawn with the peacekeepers of Team Aurora, coincidentally on the day that the Russia War would end, but was never put into action. Aurora's methods, such as endocrystal bombing, were heavily scrutinized by the community. During the war, they griefed the headquarters of the peacekeepers Nita T's base, and even a 2P2T player's base on another server. It will be revealed that their war with the Vortex Coalition was entirely manufactured drama, and afterwards they joined the Russia war on the side of the veterans. The war is said to have ended on October 22nd, the date of the last 2P2T video published by Russia. By the end of the war, it is believed that over 10,400 players were killed by the veterans during the conflict, making it the deadliest war in 2P2T history. The war featured the first major use of psychological warfare on the server, with the veterans using spies and divide and conquer tactics against the new players, eventually planning to kill off any newcomers affiliating with the veterans as well. It is well known that the true purpose of the war was to bring activity to the dead server, which Fit revealed after its end. Some began to believe his real motive was to bring fame to himself and his channel through war and the server. On October 22, 2016, the fifth incursion began, initiated by Jared 2013. Its goal was to build an obsidian wall around spawn and level the spawn, which was to be executed by the Blind Eye Clan. Its claimed targets were users arriving from Imgur, who Jared claimed revered him as a god after only a few shit posts. Only a short while after the incursion began, French YouTuber Agent GB published a video about the server. Any potential fans of his that joined the server were considered to be targets of a new incursion by some. He didn't stay long, and after receiving backlash from 2B2T's community, he ceased making any further videos on the server, and made a video explaining why he's being insulted by Americans. The fifth incursion wasn't taken seriously, and is generally regarded to have been a failure. The first major battle of the next year occurred in February, at the base of a user named Hermetic Lock, which was known as the world-famous spawn base. It was between players who wished to destroy it and its residents. Hermetic Clock continued to add to it and rebuild the base no matter how badly it was griefed. In late March, users were able to reach the world border and discovered that Pyrobite and Nitristan had previously been able to get there during one of the back doors. In late 2017, all of the map data on the server was overwritten by a user named Kinorama. They received an obviously negative response from the community before resetting the maps. He attempted to justify this by telling the players of the anarchistic nature of the server, which only intensified the backlash. In early June, the Peacekeepers and the Spawn Masons clashed at Spawn, although the battle was interrupted by the server restarting. They fought throughout the summer, eventually gaining a foothold over Spawn after the dissolution of the Spawn Masons. Around March, a group of players, including Frickin, discovered a glitch that could lag the server and crash it. The glitch involved going to the Nether and killing yourself while riding on an animal or vehicle, causing the server to respawn the player in two different locations at once, as well as dividing their coordinates by 8 and loading twice as many chunks as it should, until the number became so long the server could not handle it. On June 23rd, lag machines began to be constructed on the server, eventually lagging the server to the point of being unplayable, and to the point that the queue started to break, and players only being able to walk or type in the short window of time they were able to join. Roughly two weeks later, a similar event occurred that caused the player count to drop to 20, and the ticks per second to drop to as low as 0.35. The server crashed three times, and the chat even lagged. Its cause is more unclear than the first crash crisis, and is believed to have been caused by either lag machines that were not destroyed from the first crash crisis, or members of the Vortex Coalition, or various other groups. Around July, Fit griefed the Summer Melon base and uploaded it, claiming it to be revenge for the griefing of his own base. As a result, Oftopia claimed that it was only carried out for the purpose of garnering attention. In August, a group of users led by House 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 1 and Mining Minecraft griefed the Southern Canal and were ambushed by Jared2013 and a group of other users. The battle resulted in every involved user fleeing, getting killed, or combat logging. In September 2017, a Spanish YouTuber named ElrichMC made a video on the server, which had a title that roughly translated to the most violent and old server in Minecraft. It caused a few hundred Spanish players to join the server, and some negative reactions from the community, but did not cause any major conflicts. Elrich said that he would continue the series if his video surpassed a certain threshold in views. It did, but he never followed up on his response. Fit was contemplating starting a campaign against his players, resulting in some players believing he was only starting conflicts for attention. A large conflict began in late December between the Vortex Coalition and Imperium. A large amount of other small to large groups also joined in, supporting either side. Imperium only received support from two groups, the Eden's Disciples and the Asylum. Meanwhile, the Vortex Coalition mainly received support from Inferno, but also from other small groups like the Astral Order, Unidead, and Highland. 
The war began when the Vortex Coalition declared war on Imperium, after a long period of tensions between them. In January, the Singularity Group was formed as a separatist movement within the Coalition, and allied with Imperium. The group disbanded after a Vortex member threatened the Doxus leader, its former members mostly joining with Imperium. Inferno disbanded after Imperium destroyed several of its bases. The Vortex Coalition mostly destroyed unused Imperium bases and released videos of them doing so. Imperium did also destroy some Vortex Coalition outposts. The war ended when the two groups decided to make a Discord server for its members to reside in. In January 2018, the United Group Embassy was formed, consisting of over 15 groups on the server. Imperium joined the group, which carried over hostilities from the Vopirium War. Members of the Remnants of Inferno, now known as Infrared, called for a griefing of the first Meeting House organization, which was carried out. The group fought with other groups attempting to destroy its bases, and its third base was leaked by a member of Highland. In March, the Alpha Alliance was formed, with the goal to destroy Imperium and the rest of the UGE. It constructed very little bases, as it was mostly based on a Discord server. In early April, Ant Venom released a video on 2 t resulting in the 6th incursion. Sato, upon initiating it, called for all of the existing groups on the server to independently fight the oncoming invaders. The 6th incursion began on a temporary map. The user end base and a large number of groups participated in constructing it, including Asylum, Imperium, the Persecutioners, the Donfarian Empire, the Spawned Masons, the Soviets, the Vortex Coalition, and finally the revived Team Veteran. The incursion called for spawn to be cleared up to make it more difficult for new players to escape, and for it to be performed carefully, with no videos to be created on it, nor any other hype created. The incursion used slave labor to help build a large obsidian wall around spawn to keep the ants in, the first ever known use of such. Popular MMOs also made an appearance on the server, but denied any intention to make a video on the server. The sixth incursion was considered a success by Sato, who announced it in a brief post thanking his participants. Just like during other periods of the server's history, various other groups existed alongside the ones that participated in large events. A much larger amount of groups existed during this time than the previous time periods, due mostly because of the burst in popularity caused by Russia. The Positive Z Digging Group was a 10-month project to build a large highway on the Positive Z axis. The Nether Highway Group was a similar project which built a highway in the Nether and numerous structures on its highways. The Freelancers were a group that dedicated itself to exploration and steered clear of conflict contributed to the negative Z highway in the nether. The Spawn Masons are a group that is known to build and destroy their own creations, having been found by Hermetic Clock and even caught the attention of Fit himself after the Russia War. Goodwill Trading is an organization that collects various items from around the server to be put into a library and is known to be friendly and mature compared to other groups. The Don Fuerian Empire is a group that existed over multiple servers and exists for the purpose of influencing the server's history by action and tends to avoid conflict with other groups. Team Pepsi, Mentos, and Coca-Cola were three soda-themed groups that fought each other and formed as a reaction to each other during most of 2017. Armorsmith's followers are a group known for worshipping the player Armorsmith and is generally disliked by the community for spamming and lagging, and its dedication to Armorsmith is considered to be cult-like. The Imperialists were a group that was formed for the purpose of becoming powerful and well-known on the server, and was generally considered to be consisted of immature users. The Soviets, also known as the Communist Party of 2 p 2 t is a communism-themed group with the purpose of purging the server of fascist imagery and initially imprisoned new players from spawn. The Society is a group formed for the purpose of using the various lava casts and walls of spawn to create cities for new players to live in, as well as document things such as player behavior, which it publishes periodically. In May, players began to become concerned that the server was backdoored, as bases with their locations unknown were being griefed every day of the month, before Jared 2013 revealed himself as the perpetrator, calling this event 31 days, 31 griefs, proclaiming the age of rebirth, and leaving the future of 2B2T in the hands of its players.